Good afternoon, Gav here. Hey um, guys, we're going to do a brake pad change on the back of a, it's a Nissan X-Trail 2005. Um, this car, you'll notice the, the brake uh, discs have got a little bit of corrosion on them. We're going to leave the discs on today and ascertain how it goes from there. We might need new rotors, rotors at some stage. So it's got, it's had a bit of, let's say it's been in the salt a little bit. Um, so there is a bit of corrosion there. That's okay. We're going to replace the pads and uh, we're going to go through that. Um, there's a couple of things that we need to do. I'll show you the bolts that need to be undone. There's a bolt there to undo the caliper. Um, there's one down in behind here to undo the caliper as well. And that gets the caliper off. And we're going to take the clip that's around under here for the brake line as well to get the brake line. Gives a bit more play and that'll make life a little bit easier. Um, so that's pretty much that. And we've already broken or, or cracked the, the, the bolts there, so we've got them undone a little bit to make life easier um, and a bit quicker to show you what's going on. It's a pretty simple job. One thing before we do this, we need to part of the job we need to compress the, the cylinder in the brake caliper back. So to do that, we're going to have extra fluid going up into the reservoir, so we need to drain that. So, so that's going to be pretty simple. Um, so I'll show you in a sec. Well, in actual fact, we've already taken the brake fluid out of here. We've used a syringe to suck out extra brake fluid to make sure we don't overflow it. Put that into a jar and kept it clean. So that's all done. All right. Oh, by the way, it's a T30, not a T31. My mistake. Anyway, 2005 T30. Um, we're going to get going on that. Oh, by the way, we've got this jack underneath the disc here because it actually levels out the control arm here, which makes the bottom bolt of the brake caliper a lot easier to get out. Um, so we tried it without it, and it's much easier with the jack under there. Anyway, we'll get going on that. Let's see how we go. So as I said, we have... You want to pause for a minute? I'll advise that. <laughs> done a couple of million on like that. Yeah. So another way with these, you do, you can just slacken off the bottom, bottom bolt and, and undo the top one only and swing the caliper back. Uh, that's quite acceptable way. And yeah, I've done many like that. Um, but today I am going to drop the whole one out, so just so we can have a look at it as well. Okay, so I'm going to get the clip out here to drop the brake line out a bit better. A bit more, give us some play. <clears throat> okay, so that clips out. Don't lose it. Pop the brake line out, that's out. Easy. Okay, and let's undo that caliper. I just wonder. Alright, we're already slacking that off, make life easier for ourselves. Ooh, I'm going to drop that. Don't rush it, we're good. Top bolt undone. Um, just have a look at that. We, oh, we'll get to that. Okay, so we'll slacken off the bottom bolt a little bit more. Let's see if we can swing that back. Yeah, I actually like taking the caliper completely off. So I'm going to do that. Okay. So that's those two bolts out. Alright, so next, as I said, we just pull that caliper off and rest it up there. Okay, so what we need to do here is we've got the two brake pads. We're going to drop those out. And we're going to drop this one out here. So they're both out. This one has a little, actually has a little anti-squeal, or sorry, the little device that tells you the brake pad's getting a little too low there. It actually squeals, it's supposed to squeal. I have had them where they don't squeal. And we've got the piston there. So we need to push the piston back into the cylinder here. And around there is a little black or little rubber dust boot there and we have a problem if we push that back the dust boot can I've had it where it does come up around the front of that piston there and it's a little bit of a problem pushing it back you can do it but it is a little bit painful so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the brake pad straight back in there and then I'll push that piston back into place and I just, I just put that in the wrong way around okay that's better so that one in there and I'm going to use just a clamp. 
Oops. Okay, and I'm going to use an old brake pad. I'm going to drop that into there. Just put that up against. I won't use. Yeah, I'll use an old brake pad. Just so I can clamp up against that. It gives me a little bit more room with my clamp as well, and stops me from doing anything to that brake pad as well. Okay, and away she goes. Going back in. And that'll be pushing the fluid back up into the brake reservoir. And that's all the way home, so I'll take that clamp off. Drop that pad out. Put the other pad back in. So these have a little uh, metal like spring housing there to hold the brake pad as well. So you want to make sure that, that stays in there, doesn't move. Okay, so those brake pads are in, ready to go. Need to bolt that back in. So slide that back into place. And get a bolt started up. Always fun starting bolts off and lining them up. Ah, that feels like I've got it. Yep, certainly have. So I'll do that finger tight as much as I can. There's a hole in my glove. Uh, get the bottom one. like it. Takes a bit to line them up sometimes. Anyway, we've got that. Mm, there's a little centipede on the ground. Sorry I didn't show the centipede, he's now squished. <laughs> I have a cameraman with me today. Well, you know, um, he's pretending to be a cameraman. So that's good. Makes my life easier. It's his car. <laughs> I can't show his face, he's a professional. Oh dear. Oh dear. I love it when you get bolts that are um, too tight for finger and just a bit too easy for the ratchet. Right, that is what it is. Let's tighten that one tight. Okay, so I've got that fairly tight with um, the little ratchet there. I'm going to tighten that up with my uh, with my breaker bar, just to make sure that that's nice and tight. Last thing we want is the brakes coming undone. And I might get out of the car for that. That one. Now this back bolt here, the uh, control arm does get in the way of the ratchet so I used a wobbled one before but I've just noticed I can get this on without it at the moment so I'm going to do that with it anyway. Okay that's tight. It's not going all right, while I'm under here, I'm going to put this brake line back, in, back into place. It has got a little locating clip that makes it really easy to make sure you've got it in the right place. So that's pretty cool. There we go. 
This has where it needs to go. I'll put that little clip, there it is. I'll tap that back in. That's it, back into place now. And that's it, pretty much done. Uh, so what we've done in that little short of time, we've changed the, cal the, the brake pads. Uh, we, we didn't let the fluid go back up into the reservoir. You might need to bleed the brakes after this, and it's probably a good idea to give that a go anyway. Uh, just out of interest, I've had a couple of people that have gone to dealerships and been quoted $1,200 to do all four wheels with brake pads and rotors. Um, and, and you're probably going to get, you get your brake pads, good ones, for around about $150 for a full set, and rotors for a full set for a couple of hundred dollars as well. So it's a lot cheaper to be able to do it yourself than do it with the dealership. So there you go. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.